The Wall of Fire, presented by the Tora Bomb Squad, led by Gordon Webb of Midland, uh, Midland uh, sorry, <laughs> Middleport, Michigan, and his Torah team. At the C-17 Globemaster III, the United States Air Force's core airlifter and workhorse, which will continue to provide rapid global mobility for America. This is C-17 airplane. So the Army guys are going to fly and then parachute out. We'll open this door here and they get up and they walk here to the end. Ah, I see. Parachute here. I see. They don't have a place to land, so they fly really low to the ground.
Todd is right, right behind Christo in that close trail formation of just before they split. As he's coming around, here he comes accelerating for the rejoin. Now the practice of formation flying was first developed during World War I when fighter aircraft were assigned to escort reconnaissance planes over enemy territory. It was discovered that pairs of aircraft were much more efficient in combat than single aircraft, leading to the adoption of formations with a minimum of two aircraft, just like we see today. During World War II, pilots discovered additional strategic advantages of formation flight, including enhanced stability and greater visibility. Now Todd's flying wing here with Christo. He's relying on everything that Christo's doing. Chuck, walk us through a little bit about what their operation is here. What, what do these pilots have going through their mind right now? Well, right now, as you see, as they came across the top, Todd actually took the lead, we call a lead change. And now it's Christo following his lead. Now, both pilots are trained in lead so that they just know that they are trusting each other with their lives. And whoever is in lead, they're just, they're the one directing the formation and just utter precision through all these terms and loops. Now we've seen some loops today, but they are making some very tight loops and we've got to be pulling those jeans. It's almost as if your stomach is up in your throat as you make that hard turn. They come back to wings, locations, and head-to-head -head passes. You'll see them aggressively turn towards each other and pull into both horizontal and vertical maneuvers. These men are demonstrating the skills of the pilots as well as the agility of the van's RV aircraft. Now, with plenty of smoke and noise, they shred the box, demonstrating precision, formation, aerobatic dynamic separations, and head-to-head -head passes. Now, Chuck, that's a pretty tight turn. How many Gs do you think they're pulling right now? Oh, coming up to that, they're pulling up these two, three Gs, probably up to five. And with these aerobatic planes, they're just basically an engine and just, just light wings strapped to them. So they're, they're strapping themselves in.
Let them pass as they make that switchblade separation. Man, that was a tight, close maneuver. Ladies and gentlemen, get your cameras ready as they come. Well, the eagle's been flying slow, and the flag's been flying low. And a lot of people well, that was close. They had to be about five or six feet apart on that pass. Absolutely. It almost looked like they scraped wing tips. I'll tell you what, you have to have nerves to steal. Right hand roll. So Christo maneuvering right, followed by Woody, hot on his tip. Crew for today's demonstration is major only responsible for airlifting the majority of over 120,000 evacuees from Afghanistan during Operation Allies Refuge. In addition to their combat deployments, this crew has a combined total of 16 missions and one polar airdrop to Antarctica and the South Pole in support of Operation Deep Freeze and the National Science Foundation's Antarctic mission. The reliable airlifter combined, combines the intercontinental cargo carrying capabilities of large aircraft wow. such as the C-4. The only jet in the inventory that can back under its own power and Chelsea DeMarco is the one controlling the aircraft by direct. <laughs>